Thank you so much, Abby. And um, thank you everybody for having me here today. Um, what I will try and do first of all is just share my screen because then I get I can get rid of my nerves because the tech side of it makes me nervous. Can everybody see? Okay. Yay, wonderful. Right, so yeah, welcome to this evening under the skin of leadership. So what I'll do is I'll take you through um, <clears throat> my presentation and um, there will be an interactive part. So if you're expecting to just sit here and, and looking for me to do all of the work, then you're going to be really disappointed because there's about 20 minutes where I'm expecting you guys to, um, to pitch in and answer some deep questions. So I'll get started. If Here we go, see the tech, it's there we are. So why, um, why leadership? I'm really passionate about leadership. And as you will see, and I'm going to hopefully keep the time because um, once I get started about it, I really struggle. So what is leadership? What do I mean by leadership? Um, we're all leaders, whether we have a title or not. Um, at the very least, we all lead in our own lives. Um, we have to because nobody's going to lead it for us. Um, you may be a leader in your community. You may be a leader in this community. Um, you may be a leader for your family. Um, or it could be in an organisational context. You may be leading on a project or you may be a leader of people. So there's loads of different guises. <clears throat> what I'm mainly going to talk about this evening is um, leadership when it comes to being in an organisation and leading people. But you can adapt the principles and the exercises to any area of your life so um leadership for me is around creating an environment where the people that you're with feel really comfortable um to show up as themselves and thrive and work towards a common goal that's essentially what what i see as leadership um and your role as a, as a leader is to create the environment um where people can have their three basic needs met which is to be seen to be heard and to be valued that's the basis of what um being an a great and effective leader is um, and if you read the um the little quotes that i've got on this the screen there from leadership first people don't leave bad jobs they leave bad leaders and i think you can probably all think back throughout your career or even if you think about back to school and thinking of teachers of those teachers and those leaders who've had a, a really lasting impression on on you for a really good reason who've really seen you who have really believed in you who have really helped you to excel and feel great about yourself and do an amazing job um, and I think you probably also have experienced those people who've had the opposite effect on you, um, who've maybe not allowed you to feel really seen and heard, not welcomed you, not been there when you've needed the support that you um, when, that you needed at the time. So the impact that you have on a as a leader on the people that you're around can't be underestimated. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. Um, being a leader, in my opinion, is an incredibly privileged position um, to be in. To have that um that position of being able to to develop people to make the place that people come um the majority of their life which is in work in the work environment most of their week to make that a place that they want to come to and make it as enjoyable as as is possible um i think is a great privilege and to be able to lead and develop these people um to be the best version of themselves in the work environment and feel really proud is um, is an honor i personally i feel so who is this person who's talking to us about leadership um, like in the last hour of the Thursday evening before we clock off for the bank holiday weekend? So I'm just going to have to move you all around here because you're sort of, uh, you're all, all your lovely faces are just covering up <laughs> what I've got here. So who am I? I'm Ellie Lloyd-Jones, as Abby so wonderfully said, um, introduced me at the start. Um, I'm really passionate about self-development and using it to help others to develop themselves. That's my, my passion that I hope you will see throughout this, um, this presentation this evening. Um, I have empathy and compassion by the bucket load, but I need to be really careful that it doesn't overwhelm me. I do kind of take, I take on people's emotions and I take on their situations and I, I have like a, a trip switch um, and I have to be really careful that, um, that I don't, um, <clears throat> I don't do that too much. And I'm still learning. It's a lifelong um, lesson, I think. And the values that drive me are my family. Um, so I'm a mother of three um, and I have a husband, but also people in my life that I have a familial relationship with. Um, so they may not be blood family, but there will be people in all of our lives who feel like family. And um, so that's one of my main um, values. The next one is health. So health in terms of physical health, in terms of um, mental health, that is really, really important to me um, and drove our family's decision to move out to the Cheshire countryside um, six months ago. Um, and integrity, that's um, 
I struggle with saying that integrity is one of my main values because I kind of feel like that should be a given. Um, but, but there are some people that need it spelling out. So um, respect, honesty, all of those things for me make up integrity. And I hope that that's something that people see in me um, as they come across me. Um, and so all of that has actually led for me uh, to me establishing a 20 year career within large organisations such as British Airways and Barclays, um, where leading and coaching others has been um, at the start of their journey has actually been a main theme of everything that I've done. Um, so in January 2021, I launched my business, uh, Elevate with Ellie full time. Um, so I'm a leadership coach and I help people who are new to leading others. So I take all of those things that I do, um, do well and the things that uh, maybe drain me. And I, I bring them into uh, helping people at the start of their leadership career because I'm so passionate about it. And I personally um, love leading people and I want to make sure that, um, that others have the skills that they need to do that. Um, effectively and be able to enjoy it because I've seen too many leaders not have the right skills and really fall out of love with, um, with people management. So this is a little bit about how I work. Um, the picture is only for like acute effect. Um, there's no other reason for me to have that there. Um, so how I work, I work as, with a really holistic approach. We are all, um, we all have many facets to ourselves and I really don't believe in the approach that you should just be concentrating on on the work persona that you have, <clears throat> you will have lots of different facets to you. And I think by actually bringing all of that within um, professional boundaries um, to your work is, um, is a way to, to make sure that you don't burn out, that you don't get too exhausted and that you're able to balance your life as easily as possible. Um, with some of the questions and prompts that I put to you um, today, there is no right and wrong answer. Nobody's marking any of it. This is just about you tapping into how you feel and what feels right for you. And leading on from that, there is no judgment. And obviously seeing the slide before, it's very clear that you're a very inclusive um, community. But the judgment I'm talking about here is from your worst critic and that's you. So anything that you write down, there's no judgment from yourself around why you're writing down, what you, what, why you're feeling the way that you're feeling. If anything, it's just um, getting what's out of your head onto paper. Um, and the next thing that I'm really passionate about is listening to your body. Um, our bodies give us signals all the time and they communicate to us all of the time. But I think um, we're probably raised, especially in, um, in Western society, not to value the messages that our body gives us um, and to maybe favor and value and put more, um, more priority on the, the speaking part of our brain, the bit that's responsible for language, which on an evolutionary level is, is actually much younger than our body before we were able to speak, before we had language, um, our body was how we communicated. And so there will be times when you don't feel like you can articulate how you're feeling. And that's because your body is telling you um, things and it's, it's speaking to you. So I really invite you today, if you haven't done this before, it might feel really uncomfortable, but really listening to what your body's telling you. If you're getting little reactions or feelings or things are triggering you, um, maybe just make a note of them um, to get really curious about what they might mean. And then finally, um, I always advocate to have pen and paper with you or however you kind of record things, you may be um, more sort of electronic. During this next uh, the session, which is what, another 45 minutes or so, you will get, um, you'll get little things that are jumping into your head like, oh, I've forgot to send that email or what I have for dinner tonight oh I didn't get such a body and easter egg for the weekend whatever it is just have a piece of paper next year and just jot that down because your brain will keep trying to remind you of that so just go okay brain I'm just going to write it down and I'll come to that when the session's finished so those are some just little hints and tips about how I work and how to get the best out of the session <clears throat> um so a little orientation um I'll talk a little bit more about the starting point for your leadership journey and then I've got a few exercises for you to do which was was going to do in a breakout room, but I think, Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong, because I can only see three people here. We'll just do together because we haven't got such a large number of people. So we can actually just do it as, as an exercise, everyone together. Um, then I'm going to invite you to share um, if you want to. It's an invitation, but this is deep work. So if you don't want to share anything that comes up for you, then there's no pressure to do so. And then we will close the session. So, <clears throat> so mindset is where we're going to start. It's so important in leadership to get your mindset in the right place. You are showing up um, for other people as a representation of your team. Um, you are the person that all people look to um, if there are any issues and you'll be there to guide and support people. So it's really important that your mindset is in a place where you feel that you're able to do that. 
when you're new to leadership um, and sometimes when you're not le- new to leadership and you've been there a while, you can have the, the nagging feelings of imposter syndrome. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm really winging it. And when people start to pick up on that, then they lose trust in you. So it's really important to have a practice in place that makes sure that your, le- your uh, mindset is, is really strong or as strong as possible. If you don't have an awareness of yourself and how you're showing up, then leadership can be really difficult. As I said, other people will pick up on that, on those clues. When I talked before about body, about your body language, you can be giving clues away without realizing it if you don't feel comfortable and confident in what you're saying. So being really congruent with what's happening inside and what you're portraying and what you're giving off is really important as a leader. Um, and mindset is a practice. Like all muscles, your mind needs regular exercise and regular training. Um, and the the tools and exercises that we're going to do today are just like a tiny, tiny fraction to start, just a tiny little bit to start you on that process. I'm going to take you through um, the three areas that I use with all my clients, the very first session, but how I used to um, work with everybody who's in my team. So the very first formal one-to-one that I had with my, um, with any new team member would be these exercises that I'm going to go through with you tonight. Um, and I would give them as a, um, a bit of pre-work to think about and then they will bring it to the session where we we'll talk about it and the very first one is around values so I don't know if you've done any work on values before but I think it's Jay Shetty that talks about them being a little bit like a, a garden and um, you're having to like weed quite regularly so you have to revisit them you can't just plant your values and just walk away you need to make sure that you're still working in line with your values so <clears throat> these are some questions that you can ask yourself um to think about your values so this is what we will do now what i'd really encourage you to do is just write down what comes up off the top of your head first of all um when i ask you what is valuable to you so what do you class as being valuable and a way to help you um get to the bottom of that might be how do you spend most of your leisure time so understanding how you spend your time will help you identify what you find most valuable it might be that you enjoy watching I don't know, you might enjoy watching Netflix of an evening. So what is it that you enjoy watching on there? You might enjoy reading. What do you enjoy reading? You might enjoy exercise. What type of exercise? What is it about the exercise that you enjoy? When you're thinking about these times that you um, that you spend most of your time, um, these things that you spend most of your time doing, who are you with? Are you on your own? Are you with friends? Are you with family? There are a lot of different things. There are lots of things that you enjoy doing and you're with different people each time. And then the final one is sort of the opposite. What or who really infuriates you and why? And what with that question, what you'll find is that the reason that you get infuriated by the issue or by the person is because they're not representing your values they're going against your values so it's really important to look at it on that side as well and your values are really important because they they are like a compass and they're like a lens for you so most of the decisions that you make either consciously or subconsciously will be based on your values so whether you know what they are clearly now or not they will form most of the conversations uh, they will form most of the decisions that you make and when you know what they are it makes decision making really really easy it's like a lens eye classes like um if you ever go to the opticians to get your eyes tested and then they put all of the little lenses in to check putting the values lens in is where everything gets really sharp and you can see things a lot clearer so i'll leave you a few moments to have a think about this
if you've written some things down, see if there's any themes that you can identify. <clears throat> Something that you can do after this um, exercise is once you've written your answers to these, you can Google a like, list of values, that kind of thing. And then you can start to see if there are any of those that jump out to you <clears throat> and um, appear in the themes. Give you one more minute and we'll move on to the next one. move over to the next one which are strengths now, i think we we tend to be taught from a young age um to focus on those things that we're not particularly good at so especially in education um i've got three children who are a couple in primary school one just started high school <clears throat> and most of the stuff that i get fed back on are the things that yeah they're doing well in x y and z subject but actually they need to really um <clears throat> spend some time really bring um up in their game in this particular area and so it starts to instill within us that <clears throat> we leave alone the things that we do really well um, and kind of take that for granted. But we should spend time on the things that we don't do particularly well and bring that up. And there's this expectation that if you're doing however many GCSEs, 10 or 12 or whatever, that you should be getting the same level on all of them. You should be um, outperforming in every single area. But actually, as humans, I don't really think that's what, what we're designed to do. We're all really unique. We all have the ability to be um, amazing and great and and energized in one particular area, um, maybe more than one if you're really lucky. And that's one of the, um, the things that I love about a team is when you have a team of people together and everybody's really diverse and they all have strengths in different areas. And when you all start to come together and you understand everybody's individual strengths, the for you're a force to be reckoned with when everybody understands that. So that's why this next part is really important as well. And it helps you with your confidence to spend some time thinking about what you're really great at and something with a strength as well is that it's something that energizes you. So you can be good at something, but it really drains your energy. Um, again, I'll take you back to the empathy and compassion that I have. I am very good at being empathetic and compassionate, but it can very it can easily drain me if I don't keep a lid on it. So some of the ways to help you um, identify what your strengths are, I'll go back to your childhood. What did you love to do or play as a child? Um, what was it that brought you joy? What do people um, always come to you for help about? Um, this is my favorite one. What's your weirdness? What makes you feel really weird? Um, for me, that's planning and organizing. I used to think I was so weird for liking to be planned and organized, but actually not everyone can do that. And that blew my mind. Um, so that's one of the strengths that I have. Um, and what are you doing when you lose track of time? You might have heard that being in flow. Um, there will be certain activities that you sit down, and you get your head in and then you go, oh my God, it's like nearly clocking off time and I've, I've not done anything else. I'm just in the zone. So have a little bit of a think about these things. So what is it that you, the, the, like the sweet spot of things that you love to do and things that, um, that really energize you that you could just like skip out of the room after spending an hour, an hour or a full day doing and um, because it really kind of feeds your soul.
Just give me one more minute, <clears throat> excuse me, to have a little think. Remember to write down if anything triggers you, and it's just as important, actually, if nothing comes up for you as well, that in itself is telling. I'm trying to judge when people have done based on whether they've got the head down or not. So I'm going to take it that everybody's got the head up, that you're ready to move on. And then the final of these three um, areas is to look at your drainers or your limitations. So I said before that um, we do set, tend to, we, we're brought up to look at things that we don't do particularly well. And that's not what we're looking at here. We're looking at, it's basically trying to form your boundaries. So what is it that really drains your energy and what are your limitations? So have a think about, um, what drains your energy in the following areas. So in terms of um, practicality, so I'll, I'll use me as an example. So I've already mentioned a couple of times how much I love technology. So um, from a practical sense, um, technology is quite a drainer for me. <clears throat> I can, I've built my own website and I can do loads of the technical stuff, but I can do that for two hours and I'm done for the day. I've got no energy left. Whereas I could actually coach or I could do a session like this that lasts eight hours and skip off out of the room. So I'm really aware now that technology I can't build into my day um, unless it's like less than an hour. So that's a practical limitation or drainer that I have. Um, emotional, I've mentioned about five times now, my emotional drainer. So I've got to be really careful of um, when I've got, um, when I've got sessions on that are going to drain some of my energy. Time, I've mentioned again that I've got three children, that impacts my time quite a lot. Um, so I've got to be really careful when I'm planning things in, um, what time, um, how much time that's going to take, whether it, it, it works or not for, my, um, for the time restraints that I have. Um, and one of the things, if you've ever emailed me, you will get an, um, an instant automatic reply just saying that what my boundaries are and what my time limitations are. <clears throat> and then interests, I can be really, um, when it comes to, uh, drainers and limitations I can be really focused on some things but if it's a topic that doesn't interest me I've got I'm not really there so like most people um I have to be really careful about what my um my what my topics are and making sure that for my energy to be where it it needs to be it needs to be something that, uh, that I'm interested in if it comes to anything like politics I'm not particularly interested anything with self-development and learning I'm all over it so have a little think about um those areas um, those four areas, what drains your energy, what your limitations are. And if there are any other areas that have come to mind, it might be that none of those four ring true for you, but there might be something that you think, actually, that's something that, that I struggle with, or there may have been a big issue in the past where you think that really, I should have had a limitation in there. I should have had stronger boundaries. So have a little think about what this brings up for you.
Okay, I've just seen <clears throat> your message on there, Rachel. So I can go back over some of the slides in a minute if you want me to. Um, most people have got their head up, those who've got the camera on. So I'll move on to the next slide. Um, oh, this is just if we were going into breakout area, area rooms. So now it's the invitation um, for anyone to share what's come up for um, what's come up for you. Now, this is only an invitation. This is not um, mandatory because it can be quite deep work. Um, and also, I don't imagine just in those last 10, 15 minutes, you've been able to shape fully formed answers on and be fully um, aware of what your values, your strengths and your limitations are. This was just like a really, an invitation to just start off. Um, but if you would like to share, I know, Rachel, you're going to um, stop the recording, aren't you? To, um, yep. so, I'll, I'll pause it now. Yep. Wonderful. So those are the prompts. So one of my final slides is what has this got to do with leadership? Why am I banging on about your values and your strengths and when leadership is about telling people to do things and them doing it for you. Um, but actually, the, I think this quote by Simon Sinek kind of um, brings it um, to life in that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And although you're not selling a product as a leader, you are, you're asking people to buy into you. Um, and when you know who you are and when you're able to stand in your own integrity and you're able to, to feel comfortable in the skin that you're in um, and let it shine through, that builds trust you don't have to do a great deal um, when it comes to actual getting people to trust you because when you're living and breathing who you were meant to be they will automatically trust you and when your team are in that position and you're role modeling what it is to be a great um just somebody who's working in alignment 80 percent of your your leadership job is sort of done because once your team trusts you they will follow you and they will help you get to that goal and what i i help people with um when they're new to leadership is once you've understood who you are you then take your team on that journey you start to understand who they are as well and when you understand all of their different values or actually what's really amazing is when you get to understand that a lot of them share the same values that brings you together and makes you an even more cohesive team when everybody actually really values affiliation and wants to be wants to be together when everyone really values something like I don't know, kindness, if people value being helpful, if they have shared values that brings the team together and it helps you communicate much, e much more easily as well. If you've got somebody who values who family is one of their big values, when you're trying to motivate them, then actually talking to them about the benefit that they get to spend time with their family if they're able to produce this piece of work. If you've got somebody who's really motivated by power and status and wealth, then actually if they do a good job, then they get their, their bonus. And then they, and if bonuses are, um, are applicable where you work or they get to get their promotion and their pay rise. So it's actually becomes so much easier to motivate people when you understand what drives them and what their behaviors are. And um, so the three models that I taught people through are understand yourself, understand your people, and then learn how to communicate based on all of that information. And then the leadership job actually is so easy <laughs> because it, it kind of take care, takes care of itself because you were creating that space where you value your people, you show up for them and meet them where they're at because you understand what drives and motivates them. And that creates that space where they can show up to work to be seen and heard and valued and really respected for the job that they're doing. And when I introduced myself here, I didn't start off saying, hi, I'm Ellie, I'm a leadership coach. I started off by saying, hi, this is what I really love to do. I love self-development and I love to develop other people. Um, these are things that really, really drain me. I'm really good at them, but they, they can really drain me. And this is what I value. This is what makes me me. And by the way, that's actually resulted in me having a 20 year career as a leader and a coach. And off the back of that, I've set up my own coaching business. And when you start at it from that point of view, that's why I do what I do. That's not I'm a leadership coach. Why should you follow me? I could have started with I'm a leadership coach. I'm a strength. I've got um, I can help you with your strengths. So I'm a strengths coach as well. I'm an NLP master practitioner. I've got um, an ILM level five in coaching and mentoring and I'm a mental health first aider. Super. But what makes me different from all of the other people who've got those same qualifications? And if all of those things were to go tomorrow, heaven forbid, say, my, say I didn't have the qualifications when my children grow up and they leave home if I wasn't with my husband anymore, if all of those things go, I still know deep down that I love to develop myself and I love to develop others. I know what my limitations are and I know what values drive me. So that's really important because it shapes the person that I am. It shapes my beliefs and it shapes the behavior and I have. So when you understand that about yourself and then you understand that about your people, <clears throat> the rest genuinely 
it's, it's so easy because it just becomes like you're a conductor um, conducting an orchestra. You know where everybody is and you're just making sure that they're all working in harmony together. So that was me getting passionate and running out, um, losing track of time there. So the next steps, if you've enjoyed this, I really invite you to get really curious about those three areas to look at it a little bit more, understand your values a, a bit more, like I say, Google a list of values and see which ones kind of fit with the answers that you gave. Um, spend a bit more time on your strengths. An exercise I tend to ask people is ask three people um, who know you in different areas of your life. So maybe someone from work, somebody like a parent or someone who's known you from childhood, and maybe a friend who doesn't know you in those other contexts and ask them what your strengths are. What, what do you think I'm good at? Really vulnerable work can feel really awkward, but if you explain to them why you're doing it and it's not just a vanity project and it's you working on, on um, improving your leadership, some of the results that come back can be really, really interesting. So I really encourage you to do that if you feel comfortable to. And then over the next few days, your brain is going to be naturally thinking about this. You've got your reticular activating system in your brain that is naturally going to be looking, searching out for these things now and um, to notice what you value and how you spend your time, what you love to do, things that are draining you. So just at the end of each day, just kind of write down, what did I enjoy doing today? What did I, what left me feeling really drained? Um, who did I enjoy spending time with? What really like really niggled me? What really annoyed me? Um, and just anything else that you think that, could be quite interesting i'd like to get to know a little bit more about that and then the final side is just to say thank you thank you so much for giving me um an hour of your time before the uh, the long bank holiday weekend that i know you've all got plans um and are probably eager to get to so i do really value the time that you've um you've spent and your attention and your feedback that you've given me this evening and um, this is something where i totally lose track of time and i get really energized by so in a few minutes i'm going to go in there and my husband's going to be really annoyed that i'm going to be bouncing off the walls like i've had blue smarties for the last hour but if you would like to connect with me i'm um, i'm on instagram at elevate with ellie i'm on linkedin with my full name ellie lloyd jones and if you've enjoyed some of the questions and prompts that i've asked you to invite you to think about things slightly differently um then please sign up to my um, um, my weekly newsletter which is a 10 minute check-in you can sign up on my website and every Sunday evening I send out um, an email at 7 30 to invite you to just reflect on the week that's been set yourself up for the week ahead to understand who you are and how you're showing up a little bit more and then on the off chance that any of you are new to leadership and would um be able to spare me like 20 minutes i'm developing um like a new offering and i just need some feedback from leaders to see what your current challenges are and just see if the offering that i have kind of fits what your challenges are um so if you would be willing to help me out and give me just a little bit of market research please do connect with me on um, one of the social channels and um i would love to chat with you further but apart from that i'm going to stop talking now thank you so much for having me thank you rachel i'm gonna stop my screen share